So let's explore this whole notion of how much we want to print, how we want it to print, what the zoom is, and so on and so forth. So here I've got a really simple spreadsheet that's just got a bunch of headers across the top, and it's got a whole bunch of numbers in it. And let's say I only want to print part of this table of numbers. So if I uh, select, let's say, oh, let's say I select cell H1. Oh, I'm going to select oh, down here to uh, R18. And let's say I just want to print that. So I select those cells. And I go to print area on the page layout ribbon. And I say set the print area. So now I've set the print area. And that is basically telling Excel that's all I want to print. Well, let's just hit the print preview and see what that looks like. So you'll notice then it's printing those numbers 1 through 9 that I had selected and that batch of numbers down below. Let's zoom back out of that. Now at this point, it's pretty much filling the page across here. Um, let's close that print preview. Let's change it to uh, landscape orientation. And let's hit the print preview again. And notice uh, it, we've got a little extra room over here on the right that we could actually utilize, plus quite a bit at the bottom. Um, let's close that print preview. Now, at the bottom of your screen, where near your zoom, you have the three views, normal, page layout, and page break preview. Let's click on the page break preview option and see what that does. So the page break preview option shows me the current selection that I have. Notice I only selected those cells, you know, H1 through R18. And it's showing me that's going to be on page 1. And I know that that doesn't quite fill page 1. Well, at this point, on the page layout ribbon, you notice I have the scale option there. So if I bump that scale option, if I bump that up, I can, I can go up, up, and it still just says page 1, and it's 110% on the scale. And then I can say, let's go a little higher, 115, 120%. And as soon as I went to 125%, notice it put in this dotted line. Well, that indicated to me that I got another page. So maybe I don't want 125%. Let me back that off a little bit. And now I just have the one page. And so that's you know columns 1 through 11 of my table of numbers. Let's hit the Print Preview button. And notice now that my column 1 through 11 goes all the way over to that right edge, but it doesn't go to another page. I only have one page here. So that was basically saying, I want to take advantage of the width of my page, but I only want one page. So that was the scale. Now, you'll notice height. You can specify height and width here as being how many pages you want. Well, that's another way to kind of automatically scale it. But I just wanted to go at 120%. I actually wanted to go as far as I needed to go. I hit that 125% and I got that extra page that it would take. Now let me show you what I mean when I mean that is a page break right there. Page, page 1 will have now row uh, columns 1 through 11, the column headers 1 through 11. Let's check that with the print preview. So there's 1, th I mean 1 through 10, I'm sorry. So now it's showing me 1 through 10. Well, that next column 11, of course, is on the next page. So I click Next Page. Oops, didn't want to do that. So let's close that Print Preview and scale that back down so it fits all on one page. Now, there's another thing you can do here, though, is if I basically say, oh, what if I go to 125% and now I'm, I've got page 1 plus a column on page 2. Well, you notice that if I hover my mouse on that page break right there, this is this view, by the way, is known as the page break preview, so it's showing you where your page breaks are. Well, if I take that column with my mouse and I just drag it to the right, let's see what will happen. Well, I dragged it to the right, and now it's showing me page 1. But notice what the scale did. The scale went down to 121% because it had to reduce the scale to make it all fit on one page. So now I'm actually about as maximal as I can get because Excel calculated that out by me dragging that page break. Let's go to look at the print preview. And now I've got the column head 1 through 11 on that page. And it fits as tight as it's going to get unless I wanted to change the margins or the column widths. Okay, so that's been a little exploration of the set print area and then the using the page break preview 
we could maximize what we wanted to see on that particular page. Now, if we wanted to only see, let's say, columns 1 through 8 on page 1, and we wanted to maximize that, well, then we can just hit this up arrow on the scale, and watch, there's the page break now at between column 10 and 11 right here. And what if I go one more on the scale, 131, and now I've got r columns 10 and 11 on the next page. Let's bump that up again, bump it up again, bump it up again. And now I've got columns 9, 10, and 11. So on page 1, you see I've got my columns 1 through 8. Let's look at the page, the print preview, and see if that's true. So we, oops, I just clicked print preview on my machine locked up. Let's try that again. All right, so now I've got columns 1 through 8 all on that page, and there's not enough room for 9, unless I, of course, shrink the column widths or change my margins. Again, if you want to take it so that it's all on one page, there's several ways to do it. You can either reduce the scale till it moves this, or you can move it yourself and just drag it back over. And now notice I'm back to 121% and everything's going to fit on that page. All righty then.